They've been used for everything from currency to jewelry, can be found all around the world and come in all shapes and sizes. We're talking about seashells. I'm Jill Horner. This is Comcast Newsmakers. With me this hour is Mike Anderson. He's the Public Relations and Marketing Director for the Reading Public Museum. Good to see you. Thanks Hi, for being with us. Again. Let's talk a little bit about why seashells in Reading. Why seashells in Reading? Well, it's a good time of year to warm things up, I suppose. Uh, we also have a fantastic uh, collection of seashells ourselves, and we had the opportunity to join some of these with a, a, a private collection of hundreds of seashells. And uh, it's a nice way to combine science and nature and get the whole family in to enjoy something they, they don't see this time of year anyway. And that's really the point of this, that you do combine science and art and nature right. and, and all of the different topics that you typically cover within the museum, but in, exactly. in one exhibit. Right, and it's a nice way to, to uh, bring out our collection, or parts of it once in a while, and yet see what uh, other people have spent almost a lifetime collecting. Uh, it's uh, hundreds of shells in all different sizes, colors, uh, from the very rarest to the, to the most common, and uh, pretty much displayed in groups along with little stories about the background and information about each uh, kind of shell. Let's talk about some of the shells that we will actually see, and you mentioned different sizes and shapes, but uh, one of the most spectacular is actually in the collection of the Reading Public Museum. Talk to us about this giant shell. Well, it's a giant ruffled clam shell, and it's right at the top of the steps that the, kind of greets you at the exhibition, and uh, it weighs almost 300 pounds. Uh, it's, uh, we had a couple people have to uh, set it up in a special stand made for it, but uh, you know, it, it's it's a nice kind of entree to the to the exhibition. Itself. It's almost hard to think that there was a clam living in a 300-pound clam shell. Right, right. Yeah, and uh, but it, we have even uh, the tiniest of shells also on on display, so you can see the the. the the vast difference between some of them. One of the other interesting things in, in looking through some of these images is that not only are they different sizes, but the shapes and the coloration and the way in which these shells are, are, are displayed and uh, they, they have grown, it's totally different. None right. of them look alike. No, they don't. They're from all over the world, and each one of the shells uh, you'll see has a little tag on it as to when it was uh, supposedly alive, or the creature inside of it was alive, as to where it was found. And uh, with each grouping, you'll find out why they're shaped, why they're colored in certain ways. It's nature's way of protecting them or attracting other species. And uh, so you, it, it's educational as well as uh, fun to just take a good and look now at And now the last image that we're seeing has a, a cameo actually on the shell. And we think of seashells almost as nature's artwork. But this is a, a man-made creation on top of that. Talk to us a little bit about what we'll learn when it comes to blending art and science. Well, this particular one is called a bull's mouth helmet, and it's from our own collection. It was carved in Italy. Uh, it was part from the, uh, uh, actually from the Mengo collection. Uh, the uh, originator of the Reading Public Museum had this in his scientific collection. And along with that, we also have uh, from the 1878 Paris Exposition, mm -hmm. Uh, a demonstration of how cameos are made step by step from shells like this. So you'll you'll learn not only uh, not only take a look at the shells themselves, but you can see what was done with them to make them into pieces of jewelry, as you mentioned, or to make them more valuable. Um, they're they're really quite beautiful. I found out through the the, the uh, assistant curator on this one uh, which ones were the most rare and expensive, and it turns out it all varies it, usually upon the, the extinction of the breed and. Uh, you know, how many of them were fan in the past and the age, just like anything else, value is relative. But uh, as a grouping, it, it's a wonderful thing to see all at one time. You can spend hours in there just taking a look at each one. Uh, I didn't think I'd be that interested in it until I saw it, you know, quite honestly. Uh, it's fascinating. And, and we just have a short time left. This does run through June 5th, so we have the opportunity to come and see the world of seashells, jewels of the ocean, and learn more about what we may take for granted just walking down the beach. Absolutely. And it's a great time of year to warm up. All right. Well. Thank you so much. Thank you. We've been talking with Mike Anderson of the Reading Public Museum. I'm Jill Horner.